تو للہ اسوت الحسن وقال جل وعلا والذين اذا انفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم يقتروا وكان بين ذلك قواما صدق الله العلي العظيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله على النبي الامي واله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلاه وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم يا كريم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إن شاء الله عز وجل today we shall continue with this beautiful book which is very comprehensive in relation to the prophetic character and inshallah we should continue with um, some of the ahadith which remain in relation to the topic of calling someone a kafir or a munafiq and the grave consequences of doing so bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim babu man qala li akhihi ya kafir jisne apne bhai ko كافر کہہ دیا حدثنا اسماعیل قال حدثنی مالك عن عبد الله بن دينار عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما وعنهم اجمعين ان رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم قال ايما رجل قال لاخيه كافر فقد باء به احدهما حضرت عبد الله بن عمر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہما سے روایت ہے کہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم نے اشاعت فرمایا کہ جس کسی آدمی نے اپنے بھائی کو بلا وجہ شرعی کافر کہہ دیا یا کافر کہہ دیا اس کو تو یہ کفر کی بات ان دونوں میں سے کسی ایک پر لگ جائے گی When someone calls his brother a kafir or infidel, blasphema then the kufr returns to one of them. We mentioned to you before in the commentary that if the person who is subjected to this name, kafir, is truly a kafir, then obviously he is a kafir. But if he is otherwise, i.e. he is not worthy of that label, then فَقَدْ بَاءَ بِأَحَدُهُمَا Or, as the Prophet says, the kufr returns to the person who initiated that name, who's called that person with that name. اسم الحديث بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حديث نمبر 440 حدثنا سعيد بن داود قال حدثنا مالك أن نافعا حدثه أن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما وعن مجمعين أخبره أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم قال إذا قال الآخر كافر فقد كفر أحدهما إن كان الذي قال له كافرا فقد صدق وإن لم يكن كما قال له فَقَدْ بَاءَ الَّذِي قَالَ لَهُ بِالْكُفْرِ حضرت عبداللہ بن عمر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہما نے بیان فرمایا کہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم نے اشارت فرمایا جب کسی نے دوسرے کو کافر کہا تو ایک ان دونوں میں سے کافر ہوگا جسے کافر کہا تھا اگر وہ ایسا ہی ہے تو اس نے سچ کہا اور اگر وہ ایسا نہیں ہے تو ایک کفر اس کہنے والی کی طرف لوٹ آئے گا So you have to be very careful here. And it is only the work and the authority of the ulama, the mufti and kiram, to call someone a kafir. We are not to judge someone because at times there's kufr luzumi and iltizami and there's certain nuances in uh, anathematizing someone and yani calling someone a kafir. So, but obviously someone who is a manifest kafir, he is to be called a kafir. There are people who are in this day and age, they say, why are you calling such and such a person or such a group a kuffar, apostates? Whereas we are Muslims, they pray towards the Qibla. Well, the Quran says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, instructs him, this is a divine instruction, unequivocally saying, declaring the kuffar, يَا أَيُّهُ قُلْ يَا أَيُّهُ الْكَافِرُونَ Oh, kuffar, or oh, infidels. In the hadith of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم where he separates the munafiqeen and the mu'mineen. 
the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was ascended on the pulpit in Jumu'ah and he by name, he called people Munafiq. Ukhurj, fa'innaka Munafiq. Ukhurj ya fulan ibn fulan. So this is the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But this is in relation to general uh, labeling someone as a kafir. Rasulullah said when someone calls another person a kafir and he is a kafir, then he has spoken the truth. But if he is otherwise, i.e. he is not a kafir, فَقَدْ بَاءَ الَّذِي قَالَ لَهُ بِالْكُفْرِ Then this kufr, this label returns back to the one who called him a kafir. He then comes out of the foes of Islam. وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم باب الشماتة الأعداء دشمنوك خش هنا the gloating of the enemies يعني when something bad happens to you when there's a mishap and you have some enemies Muslims have enemies the kuffar so when something happens to the Muslims they all laugh and we should seek refuge with Allah سبحانه وتعالى أو رمي الله تعالى كي بناه ماعني جاية أي حالة سه كي جس مي كفار لوج همارا مزاق اوراي هماري تكاليف كي اوبر خشي مناي اور آج یہی کر رہے ہیں وہ لوگ جہاں بھی مسلمانوں پر تکلیف پہنچتی ہے شام ہو یمن ہو برما ہو ہندوستان ہو پاکستان ہو جہاں کہیں بھی بھی ان کو تکلیف پہنچتی ہے وہ خوشی مناتے ہیں تو حدیث شریف سمات کیجئے حدثنا عبداللہ بن محمد قال حدثنا سفیان عن سمین عن ابی صالح عن ابی حریرت رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ وعن مجمعین ان النبی صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کان یتعوذ من سوء القضاء وشماتة الاعداء حضرت ابو حرر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ بیان فرماتے ہیں کہ نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم برے فیصلوں سے اور دشمنوں کی شماتت سے پناہ مانگا کرتے تھے سبحان اللہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم used to seek refuge from an evil decree from anything from fate which was evil and from any state which would then subject the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم to being mocked at by the infidels, by the kuffar, by the mushrikeen. Every single Muslim should seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from coming into or from being in a state in which the non-Muslims make mockery, make fun of you, make fun of a Muslim. If a calamity befalls a Muslim, they laugh. They'll celebrate. So seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from such a state. And how can we truly uh, avert such a calamity befalling us is to follow the commandments of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to follow what Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have uh, told us to do, the, follow the injunctions of the Quran and the Sunnah, and inshallah azza wa jal, shamata will never prevail. You will always be triumphant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَأَنْتُمُ لَعَلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do not fear, وَلَا تَهِنُ وَلَا تَحْزَنُ do not fear, do not be in wahan, do not be in grief, do not be in misery, do not stress, for surely you are the loftiest, you are superior, so as long as you are true believers. So we need to return back to that uh, unshakable belief in Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another similar topic to which we had discussed before um, from Imam Abdul Wahab Ash'arani rahimullah's book al waqil Hanwar. Inshallah we should read it from here as well. فبارك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم باب الصرف في المال مال من فضول خرجي كرنا extravagance and squandering in property or in wealth we spoke at length in relation to this that it does not befit a Muslim to squander his money squandering in itself al israf لا إسراف في الخير ولا خير في الإسراف there is a saying that there is no squandering in righteousness, i.e. You, can, you cannot reach any limit. You can go on and on and on in righteous deeds. And there is no goodness in israf, in squandering. There is no squandering in righteousness, and there is no righteousness in squandering. Wasting people, wasting money. Uh, we will come on to what the Messenger says, what does wasting money entail, what does it mean, what are the grave consequences, I mean... We spoke about this at length, especially with our women folk and their wardrobes. Remember? Yes. And obviously the men who are sometimes under the thumb, they should also understand that obviously, yes, the Prophet did mention that you, you're raising a morsel of food to the mouth of your wife will be written as sadaqah. And you spending on your family. Dina anfaqtahu fi sabilillah. Wa dina anfaqtahu fi 
كذا وكذا ودينار انفقته على اهلك افضلها افضله دينار انفقته على اهلك او عيالك the prophet saw us mention that a dinar a, a, a coin money that you spend in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in freeing a slave in uh, righteous deeds and a dinar a coin a an ounce of money that you spent on your family the best of that the best of the money is that which you spend on your family but this is again as we said to you before in moderation which, which is between as what allah says lam yusrifu wa lam yaqturu those that when they spend they are not thrift spenders they are not extravagant they don't go ott especially in weddings our weddings are usually how much you are an expert in this 25,000, 50,000 pounds, at least, bare minimum. Someone sent me, uh, uh, someone sent me a message, uh, I can't remember now, and they said they had prepared a wedding feast in Burj Al Arab. We're going to come on Burj Al Arab as well. Uski bi khair karte hain bi baad mein. Uski bi khair nahi And uh, they said just for the desserts, they made 20 different desserts. Yani, let's not even talk about the main course, the starters. The welcoming. This is this is extravagance for all. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Inna al-mubadzirin kanu ikhwan al-shayatin." Those who are uh, extravagant spenders, those who don't spend in al-haq but spend it in balti, in in vain and in vanity, in showing off, in pretense, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that they are the brothers of Satan. They are like Satan. So if people want to be honored by getting that label, then fine. But otherwise, people need to be very circumspect about how they spend their money, how they accumulate their wealth, and how they spend it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the questions which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask, لَن تَزُولَ قَدَمَ عَبْدٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَتَّى يُسْلَ عَنْ أَرْبَعَ The feet of Banu Adam will not move until he will be asked about four things. One of them, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَعَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنَ اكْتَسَبَهُ وَفِيمَ أَنْفَقَ a person will be questioned in relation to his wealth. Where did he acquire it from? And where did he spend it? Maal ke baare mein sawaal kiya jayega. Kaise kamaya? Kis kin zarai ke saath usko kamaya? Halal zarai ke zariye, haram zarai ke zariye usne kamaye maal ko. Or kin chizo mein usne apna maal kharch kiya? Ye sawalat kiye jayenge. Or usse pehle aadmi maidan hashr se nahi hat hat sakega. ایک قدم بھی ہٹ نہیں سکے گا جب تک کہ ان سوالات کے جواب نہ دے سو لسن ٹو دس حدیث بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم حدثنا عبد الله بن يوسف قال اخبرنا مالك عن سهيل بن ابي صالح عن ابيه عن ابي هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه وعنه مجمعين ان رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم قال ان الله يرضى لكم ثلاثا ويسخط لكم ثلاثا يرضى لكم أن تعبدوه ولا تشركوا به شيئا وأن تعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا وأن تناصحوا من ولاه الله أمركم ويكره لكم قيل وقال وكثرة السؤال وإضاعة المال أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم حضرة أبوه رضي الله تعالى عنه سليبات هيك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نشاد فرمايا بلا شبا الله تعالى تم ستين باتو سيرازي هتاها اور تین باتوں سے ناراض ہوتا ہے اللہ تعالیٰ تم سے ان باتوں سے راضی ہوتا ہے یہ کہ تم اسی کی عبادت کرو اس کے ساتھ کسی کو شریک نہ کرو اور اللہ تعالیٰ کی رسی کو سب مل کر مضبوطی, مضبوطی سے پکڑو اور اس شخص کی خیر خواہی کرو جس کو اللہ تعالیٰ نے تمہارے کاموں کا والی بنایا ہے حکمرہ بنایا ہے تمہارے اوپر اور اللہ تعالیٰ تم سے ان باتوں کو ناپسند فرماتا ہے قیل و قال سوال کی کثرت کو اور مال کے ضائع کرنے کو دا پروبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سید اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ پلیز ویو تھری آف یور کیریکٹرسٹکس تھری تھنگس دیٹ یو فیو فالو اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ویل بی پلیز ویو یو نمبر ون دیٹ یو ویشپ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ سنسیلی اینڈ دیٹ یو ڈو ناٹ اسوشیٹ پارنرز ود ہم اوبیسلی وی ڈو ناٹ انڈرسٹینڈ ایون دا سلائٹسٹ اسمشن کین ناٹ بی گیئر ٹوورڈ اے مسلم اسوشیٹ پارنرز ود اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ویچ وی نو ایز آئیڈالٹی شرک There is another form of shirk which the Prophet also mentioned, mentioned ar-riya or shirkun, pretense. Yani showing off is also 
a lesser form of shirk. Showing off is also a form of shirk. So again, refrain from that. And then the second thing the Prophet ﷺ said was what? Uh, Hold fast onto the rope of Allah. What is the rope of Allah? Everyone should unite with one rope or on one rope. What is that rope? That rope is Al-Quran Al-Kareem. So whatever the Quran says you do, you should do it. Whatever the Quran forbids you from doing, you should be the most distant from doing that. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, أَمْرَكُمْ That you are the well-wishers of those who are appointed over you to judge over you or those who are appointed over you to govern you. The governors, the presidents, the prime ministers, etc. Especially in Islamic governance and in Islamic uh, dynasty, we should be the well-wishers. How do you well become a well-wisher of the hukama that you guide them towards that which is the correct and you forbid them from that which is the wrong so tell the hukama tell the tell the uh, tell the um, uh, the umara this is something that is not happening in the islamic world this is why we are in a turmoil we are humiliated because where are the people who used to go to the uh, the kings, the tyrants and the oppressors, the Muslims, and used to put them straight. We used to hear about great uh, ulama and awliya, Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah. We never used to go to the kings, the kings used to go to them, and whenever the kings used to go to them, they would admonish them, they would speak the truth. And this was the greatest jihad, as the Prophet ﷺ said, afdal jihadi kalimatu haqqin inda sultanin jair. The best form of jihad is for you to speak a word of truth in front of a tyrant leader. What is happening in the Islamic world is, is manifest before your eyes, it's right before your eyes because there is no one admonishing them. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned If only we were to follow this, this nasih of Rasulullah ﷺ. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with you engaging in qila wa qal. Qila wa qal literally means what? It was said and he was said. Yani gossip. Today we go to restaurants and there is an entire area called the gossip area, the chit chat area. Gossiping basically. Whatever is happening on social media is gossip. Seriously. Go on Twitter, go on Facebook, go on WhatsApp. Apart from gossip, what else are we doing? He did this and he did that, she did it and she did that. Yes, obviously there are a certain few, handful, select few individuals who will be doing, who will be using the social media platforms in order to spread the work of the deen, propagating Islam, alhamdulillah. But the vast majority, overwhelming majority of Muslims are in qila wa qal. He said this and he said that, this happened and that happened and this is the new story, this is the headline. And with uh, unlimited minutes and unlimited data allowance, this is what you're going to get. Squandering again. Not unlimited uh, minutes because obviously, mashallah, you were talking about the deen. You had a nice long conversation which revolved around deen matters. No, because you were, you were engaging in gossip. So you're out of minutes. So you, told, you rang the, um, phone, the line provider, the SIM provider, and they said, you know, I need unlimited, unlimited minutes. Because my words do not finish. Minutes finish by my words do not finish. Allahu Akbar. Qila wa qal. And the Prophet also said to, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with the fact that you ask too many unnecessary questions. How long was the ark of Nuh alayhi salam? How high was the staff of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam? Etc. Etc. And you don't need to know these things. You need to know about the deen, the basic necessities of religion. You don't need to know about these things. And again, unnecessary questions all the time. You've already explained a ruling, and then you want to go to the nitty gritty, as they say, "Bal mekhal nikalna." You shouldn't do that. Okay. And the Prophet also said the third thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which if you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be severely displeased with you is idha'atul uh, mal, is wasting money. 
Today, if there is a construction that is happening of an Islamic institute, or people want to publish books, or if people want to do dini work, you ask people for a bit of donation, they'll put their hand in their pocket, they won't go deep inside, and they bring out a new crispy note, or the polymono, polymono note, the, uh, what do you call it, uh, fireproof, waterproof, probably not bulletproof, uh, note. And when it comes to celebrations, weddings, uh, squandering, showing off, yes, thousands of pounds. A wedding dress, I actually uh, came to know yesterday, costs approximately, how much? You, mashallah, not you, I'm talking about the bachelors behind us, inshallah. 1,800 pounds. Wallahi, I'm not joking, I'm sat in the mosque. I saw a dress yesterday, wedding dress, costing 1,800 quid. And it's not a dress that they wear, and any of the women folk wear all throughout their entire life and they sleep in it and they use it as a pajama and they use it as a nightwear. No, khalas, one day uh, they walk in the stage, hopefully they can walk properly with their high heels on, not tripping over something. And for a few photos and khalas, 1800 is gone. But for deeny work, for the deen, baj paun liji, this paun liji. Allahu Akbar. And Allah at the end of those 10 points that we mentioned about propagating the Ahlu Sunnah Tawal the pristine teaching of the Ahlu Sunnah, he said at the end, in the latter times, the work of the deen will be with through dinar and darahim, through money. So deen will need money, religion will need money, the Islam will only flourish through money. Allah may tawfiq ata farmai. Just a few, a uh, couple of a hadith inshaAllah Azza wa Jalla. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <coughs> حدثنا حدثنا عبد الله بن سعيد قال حدثنا سعيد بن منصور قال حدثنا إسماعيل بن زكريا عن عمرو بن قيس الملائي عن المنهال عن سعيد بن جبير عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما وعن مجمعين في قول عز وجل وما أنفقتم من شيء فهو يخلفه وهو خير الرازقين قال في غير إسراف ولا تقدير حضرت عبداللہ ابن عباس رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہما نے اللہ جل شانہو کے اس قول کہ جو کچھ تم خرش کرو گے اللہ تعالیٰ اس کا بدلہ دے گا اور وہ بہترین رزق دینے والا ہے اس کی تفسیر میں یہ بیان فرمایا کہ خرش کرنے سے مراد یہ کہ فضول خرشی اور بے خرشی نہ ہو اس میں اللہ تعالیٰ بہترین بدلہ تمہیں عطا فرمائے گا یعنی ایسا خرشہ کہ جس میں نہ فضول خرشی ہو اور نہ ضرورت سے کم خرش کرنا اگر تم ایسا نہیں کرتے ہو تو اللہ تعالیٰ تم جو خرش کرتے ہو انشاءاللہ اس کا بہترین بلدہ تمہیں دنیا بھی بیتا فرمائے گا اور آخرت میں بھی انشاءاللہ اللہ تعالیٰ وہ زخیرہ تمہیں ضرور عطا فرمائے گا اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی سیدنا عبداللہ بن عباس رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ منشن in the commentary of this verse of Al-Quran Al-Kareem in which Allah سبحانہ وتعالی says whatever you spend in the way of Allah سبحانہ وتعالی so as long as it's not extravagance yani it's between two extremes not too much spending too much and spending too little. If you spend in moderation, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُ Allah will give you a better replacement. You give a pound in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We explained how giving one thing, an item in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will yield 700 times more. And then Allah says, وَاللَّهُ يُضَعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah will increase it even more. باب المبذرین فضول خرشی کرنے والے کون ہیں who are those who squander حدثنا قبیصة قال حدثنا سفیان عن سلمة عن مسلم عن مسلم البطین عن ابی العبیدین عن ابی العبیدین قال سألت عبد الله عن المبذرین قال الذین ينفقون في غیر حق حضرت ابو العبیدین سے ریبات ہے کہ انہوں نے حضرت عبداللہ ابن مسعود رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ سے المبذرین فضل خرش کرنے والوں کے بارے میں پوچھا تو انہوں نے فرمایا اس سے وہ لوگ مراد ہیں جو غیر حق میں خرش کرتے ہیں المبذرین those who squander are those who spend their money in against the truth not in the path of Islam in squandering, in showing off, in promoting evil, in promoting heresy, in promoting shamelessness, in promoting immodesty they are the Al-Mubazzireen, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an to be the brothers of Shayateen. Those who squander, those who waste their money, Allah says, whom, uh, Allah says they are Ikhwanu Shayateen. They are the brothers of Shaytan. 
of Shayateen, Satan. حدثنا عارم قال حدثنا هشيم قال حدثنا حسين عن كريمة عن ابن عباس المبذرين قال المبذرين في غير حق similar narration as to what we had mentioned before بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم باب إصلاح المنازل قرون كي إصلاح كرنا to refurbish one's home we will mention later on in this chapter there are certain ahadith of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم which mention the reprehensibility of people spending too much money on their home and unfortunately there are many home many many people many households that we see and they are not content with the huge rooms that they have they're spacious they've got plenty of room but they want to increase it further and further and further the reprehensibility and condemnation of that will come later on but this is something which has Umar ibn Khattab rather than mentions and we shall, we shall uh, mention this inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Haddathana Abdullah ibn Yusuf qal haddathana al-Layth qal haddathana ibn Ajalana an Zayd ibn Aslam an Abihi qal kana Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu yakulu ala al-minbari ya ayyuhu al-Nas aslihu alaykum mathawiyakum wa akhifu hathihi al-jinnan qabla an tukhifakum فإنه لن يبدو لكم مسلموها وإن والله ما سلم ما سلم ما سلمنا هن منذ عادينا هن أو كما قال حضرت زيد بن أسلم رحمة الله بن باب سريبات كرتة هي كي حضرت عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه بر سري ممبر يفرماي كرتة هي أي لوجو توم أبنى غرو كو دروست كرو اسمه جو سوراخ وغيره هي this is obviously for India and Pakistan, for especially with those countries in which these animals uh, reside. Apne gharon ko durust karo taake nuksaan se mehfooz raho. Aur yeh joh saab gharon mein nikal aate hai, joh kabhi kabhi jinn bhi hoote hai, unko dadao is se pehle ke woh tumhe dadaay. Yeh nuh unko maar do. Kyunki un mein joh musalman hoote hai, woh zair ho kar tumhare saamne nahi aate, joh kafir aate, joh kafir un mein se hoote hai, wahi sat aate hai. اور اللہ کی قسم ہم نے ساپوں سے کوئی صلح نہیں کی جب سے ان کی ہماری دشمنی ہے This is advice given by Sayyiduna Umar ibn Khattab رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ and he said this whilst he was ascended on the pulpit he said Oh people, refurbish your homes don't leave any gaps, don't leave any holes especially in India, Pakistan there's a lot of chameleons what do you call chameleons? Chipkali or in your language, in our language Habakli yeah, they are not, they are not as um, venomous and as dangerous as snakes, but even then, they are. You know, imagine going to the loo with that chameleon, you know, right over you. Subhanallah. Uh, so these, he said that protect your homes from any kind of calamity, any kind of loss. And then he mentions, in your homes, these snakes... Cast fear into them before they cast fear in you. I kill them before you kill them. But I'm going to mention to you what a person should do before he actually attacks a snake. For us, obviously, the Indians, especially the Vora Patel community, uh, if you sight a snake a mile's distance away, you probably run a mile away even before you actually attack the snake or it attacks you. Attacking it would be a dream. Uh, because the Prophet ﷺ then said, because the Muslims from amongst them, they seldom do they appear. It's the kuffar amongst them who attack you, who, you know, cause pain. And he says, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have never ever reconciliated with snakes. Snakes have always been our enemies. Snakes have always been our enemies. In one narration it says, in one narration, Allahu alam about the authenticity, but this is what, have, what has been read in some of, some of the books, that Satan actually entered Jannah to cast whisper, or to cast insinuations into the minds of Sin Adam alayhi salam, or trying to attempt it to, in the form of a snake. In the form of a snake. So, here it is written that بعض روایت میں یوں ارشاد فرمایا کہ جب گھروں میں تم ان کو دیکھو یعنی کن کو ساپ کو تو تین مرتبہ ان کو یوں کہہ دو کہ دیکھ تو ہمارے گھر سے چلا جا پھر مت نکلنا یہ تین دفعہ ان سے کہو 
ورنہ میں ورنہ ہم تجھے قتل کر دیں گے اگر چلا گیا تو ٹھیک ہے اگر جن ہوگا تو یہ جن ساپ جن چلا جائے گا ورنہ پھر اسے قتل کر دو کیونکہ وہ کافر ہے کافر جن مسلم جن وین یو سی گو اوے فرام مائی ہوم ڈونٹ کم آؤٹ ایور اگین ڈونٹ ایور اپی ان مائی ہوم ایور اگین اف اٹس اے مسلم جن ان دا فارم آف اے اسنیک اٹ ول گو اف اٹس اے کیفر ریبیلس جن اٹ ول ریمین سو دیف او کل اٹ اور ایک حدیث شریف میں یوں ہے کہ مدینے میں کچھ جنات ہیں جو مسلمان ہو گئے ہیں جب تم سانپ کو دیکھو تو چونکہ یہ احتمال ہے کہ جن سانپ کی صورت میں ظاہر ہو گیا ہو اسے تین دن تک محلت دو یو اعلان کرو کہ تو پھر نہ نکلنا ورنہ ہم تجھے قتل کر دیں گے پھر بھی ظاہر ہو جائے تو قتل کر دینا کیونکہ وہ شیطان ہے یعنی مسلمان جن نہیں ہے بلکہ کافر جن ہے اللہ تعالی ہم سب کو احادیث مبارکہ سمجھنے اس پر عمل کرنے کی توفیق ادا فرمائے